On today's video, I want to share with you five things that I was clueless about when I started my nursery. And they seem to me to be things that I could have only learned through time and through trial and error and just through doing this. So I want to share those five things with you today and I'm looking forward to doing that. The first thing that I had no clue about that I wanted to share with you is when I started doing this, I was kind of, I had kind of had the idea that I wanted to try to grow some plants, but I did not know what plants to grow because when I go visit a nursery to buy plants for my own house or just to look around, I always see these beautiful blooming perennial plants like daisies and coneflowers and black eyed Susans and all of these beautiful perennial plants. and. In my mind, when I think about a nursery, that's the first things that come to my mind is these plants with these beautiful, beautiful flowers on them. And very early on in my nursery, I bought some of those plants that I mentioned and other little perennial plants as little plugs and grew them out. And what I found about those that I struggled with with a small nursery and as a backyard grower is that it's really hard to sell them unless they are in nice bloom. So. All of those perennial plants bloom at different times. You may have some that bloom at the 1st of April or the 1st of May or the second week of April or the first week of June. And when you've got them coming into season and looking nice at all different times of the spring and even of the summer, it's really hard to be able to have a driveway sale and sell them because they don't all look nice at the same time. So instead of trying to time that out and figure out which perennials are nice in early April or which perennials are nice or in early May and just focusing on those, I got a little bit overwhelmed with it. I ended up with a bunch of plants that I couldn't sell and I had to kind of figure out a better way to approach that. So as time went on in my nursery, I figured out that there are plants that look good for a very, very, very long time. And I talk an awful lot in my videos about plants like the arborvitas, these screening trees. Now, if you look at this, this is an evergreen screening tree. This is perfect size to sell right now. And you tell me what time of year this would not be pretty to sell. Well, the reality is, is it's pretty all the time. So I can sell these March through October easily. And I just don't try to sell them in the winter because I don't think anybody's looking for them in the winter. But they look nice all the time, not just one or two weeks in April or one or two weeks weeks in May, but they look nice all the time. Same is true with the hostas. And I've talked a lot about these hostas and here's just an example of one. But what I had to figure out is what are some plants that I can do on a small scale in my backyard that will look nice all the time or at least for several months of the year. So that was just something that I didn't know when I was starting my nursery. So now I focus on plants like hydrangeas and hostas and evergreens and some other plants that I've showed you. But I want plants that are nice for a long time and not just for a short time. The second thing that I really had no clue about and was a very pleasant surprise is how eager people are to buy plants. Now, the very first time I ever posted plants for sale, I had a few emerald green arborvitas, I think 10 of them, and I put them out in a yard sale that we had. We were just having like a rummage sale in our front yard on a Saturday, and I decided to stick some plants out there, and I was kind of embarrassed to do it, and it felt weird, and I didn't know if people were going to ask me questions about them that I couldn't answer or what, but those 10 plants were among the first things we sold that day, and the people that were here when I sold them, all they wanted to know is, do you have more? Well, I didn't. I was just starting out. I didn't have many of anything. But it was an obvious sign to me that people would be eager to buy plants if you just had nice plants at a nice price and you let people know what you have. You don't have to have regular hours where you're open from 8 to 5 or free, you're open from whatever. You just have to post publicly what you have and people will contact you and they're going to want what you have. You don't have to be a great salesman or a great saleswoman. You don't have to have any great marketing skills. You just have to be willing to let people know what you have and people will be eager to buy nice pretty plants from you at a fair price from your own backyard. A third thing that I was surprised about speaking of selling plants is how many repeat customers, if you want to call them customers, repeat buyers that we have had here. Now, from the very first year, how many, how many years have we been selling plants? Three, four, four years we've been selling plants. 
for four seasons we've been selling plants and each of the last two years at least it's really amazing to me how many people come back by here each year and just want to know what we have when i post something for sale on facebook whether they're interested in that item or not they'll come by or they'll contact me and say hey do you have any of these or any of these or any of these and people frequently are letting me know that uh, that the plants have done well and that they would like more so I'm sure there's a term for that in the business world. I call it a repeat customer, but they are an extraordinarily valuable thing. And when you have nice plants to sell, they kind of do the work for you. The plants do the work for you and drawing people in over and over, which cuts down on how much advertising you have to do. And it cuts down on how much effort you have to put into selling your plants because they're going to sell themselves. And a lot of your plants are going to sell themselves to the same people over and over and over again. A fourth thing that I had no idea about, and it was really one of the big hangups about getting started, and again, when it comes to starting a nursery, there's just so much that's unknown, and it's hard to find the answers to out there. So there's not just this place where you can go look up the answer to how to start a nursery, and here's you some steps, unless you check out this video right here. But anyway, one of the things that I was completely clueless about was would suppliers and like wholesale nurseries be willing to sell to me because I'm nobody. Nobody knows my name. Nobody's ever heard of my nursery. I don't buy a lot of stuff, so I'm not some customer that's spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars with wholesalers. So I didn't know if I was going to be able to acquire plants and supplies like pots and fertilizer and that kind of thing. I just, I did not know. And what I found is that it's really easy to get your foot in the door with these people, and it's really all about just making some phone calls. The overwhelming majority of wholesale nurseries that you're ever going to deal with, whether you're just buying in a few plants like I do, or certainly buying in on a much, much larger scale, their job and their livelihood is selling baby plants, selling small plants. And they want to sell them to people like me. They want to sell them to people like you who are just buying 50 of something or 100 or two or 300 of something, just a few plants. They're willing to sell those things to you and getting online and searching, learning how to use good search terms to find wholesale nurseries to buy little plants from is really important in getting your nursery started and, and once you get it started and keeping it going because you're gonna learn how to propagate a lot of plants on your own but there's some plants that you either can't propagate or it's hard to propagate or that you just don't want to propagate and you have to buy in babies from somewhere and getting through that step and just mentally understanding that there are plenty of people out there that are ready to sell to you even if you've never tried it before that's a big big deal and I had absolutely no idea. A fifth thing that I was clueless about, just didn't know, was how quickly my space was going to get filled up with plants. Now, I've got about 14 or 1,500 square feet back here that is my entire backyard nursery. Now, that doesn't mean there's 1,500 square feet with plants on every inch, but that's uh, some grassy areas out here, and that's my potting soil pile, and that's some walkways, and in all, about 1,500 square feet. And... What it seems like is that you can never have enough space, you can never have enough potting soil, you can never have enough pots, and however much space you think you need, however many supplies you think you need, whatever number of plants you think you want to limit yourself to, you're probably going to outgrow it faster than you ever thought. If you're into propagating plants, which as far as I'm concerned, doing a backyard nursery effectively, you absolutely have to propagate most of your own plants. But when you start doing that, you're going to overrun yourself with plants. It's one of those good problems to have, but it turns in sometimes to where am I going to put all that stuff? And that's why I've got a thousand arborvitas out here that are just kind of crunched all together. And uh, it is because they just expand and grow and get out of hand a little quicker than you ever thought. Again, good problem to have. They're all worth something, but you have to sell them. But that being said, I just didn't know that... What I intended to take up about, oh, four or 500 square feet now takes up 1,500 plus. So as you're thinking through your nursery, as you're planning for your nursery, just always understand that you're probably going to need more space than you think. So this was just a quick video today to just get you to thinking about some of the things that 
you probably don't know about starting a nursery, but maybe some more things to think about. Listen, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel right over here. Just click on my face right over here. And here's a couple of other videos you can watch that teach you more about backyard growing, backyard nursery, and kind of how to make all of this work on your own spare time. Thank you all for watching today. I love every single one of you, and I'll see you on the next one.